All right, guys. So I really messed up my weekly wrap ups. You should have had one on gender. And instead, I apparently gave you one mm -hmm. on <laughs> intelligence. So no worries. Um, it's not the end of the world, but I do feel really bad about that. Uh, so I'm giving you guys extra time to finish it because obviously uh, you won't have the information until this week. Um, I'll put it out on the stream too. It was completely my fault. I totally biffed that one, but it's okay. It'll all work out in the end and I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be okay. So anyhow, don't worry. I'm grading it easily. Some of you guys who've done it already, like I said, if it's not hundred percent correct, just do your best, do the Google searches and kind of move on. All right. So when we talk intelligence, all right, that is your ability to adapt and understand your environment. Okay. This is a combination of inherited and learning experience. Guys, somewhere around 50% of your intelligence comes from your genes. The other 50% comes from your environment. So you could have genes of a genius, but have a poor environment where you're never able to really capitalize on those good genes. Okay. So I say 50%, it's just really dependent on the person, but it's approximately 50% of your intelligence comes from your genes. All right. Um, being said, everyone has intelligence, okay? Even if you're you're not, you don't consider yourself to be as smart as other people, there are other areas that you may be good in that maybe you just don't know yet, um, so on and so forth. But there are varying degrees of this and types. And we're going to talk about types on Wednesday because not all types are, how do I say, um, not all types are uh obvious okay because things like being artistic art art be having art artistic ability is actually a type of intelligence and i'll tell you i'm not artistic uh at all like i probably have an aptitude of about two on that but you know where i have maybe high reading comprehension or you know uh verbal interpersonal uh intelligence I don't necessarily have, or emotional intelligence is what I should say. I don't necessarily have like artistic or naturalist or uh, math spatial intelligence. So you got to figure out what you're good at. I think that's really the bottom line up front is not, not all intelligence are there and everything varies and it's very individually paced. All right. So how do we measure intelligence? Okay, guys. So remember, psychology is kind of like this moving scale. We look at early psychology and you realize how kind of jacked up it was. And um, it's they really tried to figure out how do you measure uh, intelligence, okay? Um, so some of the first tests were kind of weird. They would like press like these like plugs or, you know, pieces of wood or stuff onto someone's head and see how long it took for a person to succumb to pain. And that is where the word dull or dumb come from. Because if it didn't, you know, if you didn't feel pain, I guess, in the normal range for a person, you would be considered dumb because your brain wasn't reacting, I guess, in the right way. I mean, it's, it's silly. Uh, that being said, what it did cause people to realize, even though the tests themselves were really kind of silly, um, is that stimulus is a part of your intelligence. Your ability to adapt to something happening to you is part of your intelligence. All right. And this leads us to the Stanford Binet scale. And this is one of the first intelligence tests conducted. And the reason he did this, okay, is that he under the uh, Stanford Binet, what they understood is that not every student is a good fit for regular school, okay? And that some students need special help in order to succeed at the same level as their peers. And so this is why IQ tests started, all right? So in his idea, there are four elements of intelligence. Direction, meaning that can you follow direction? Are you able to adapt to uh, changes? Can you comprehend what is written and can you self-evaluate can you look at yourself and realize when you did something wrong how you're going to fix that in the future okay so this is kind of that first test so this specific test isn't always used i think that needs to be clarified but the, a test 
<coughs> developed later or similar to it uh, is used still to today. Okay, so what he did is that he made this standard test that could be tested for anyone ages 3 to 15, okay? And the test just progressively got harder. So you would have a three-year-old take this test and he would expect to make it through what you would expect a three-year-old to know. So obviously he couldn't make it past a certain part of this test because it would progressively get too hard above his natural cognitive level. And that's how they addressed IQ. So if you were 15, but only scored as a five-year-old, then you might have a mental ca capacity of a five-year-old, even though you're a teenager, all right? Um, so, so things like what objects don't belong, um, you know, shapes to color or colors and shapes and stuff. And then, you know, level five, which is the highest, might be some kind of analogy, uh, stuff like that. So the point was to organize children into groups so that they could be properly taught at their level. All right. And this is the idea of mental age. So I am 32 years old. And if I take one of these tests and I score above average, then I may have a higher mental age than what I really am. And this is more profound in children more than adults. So like if a five-year-old takes this test, but scores at the same level as a 10 year old, he may have a mental age of a 10 year old. Okay. So your mental age is either at below or above your actual age. And that is based off of again, testing. So there is some uh, issues with this when it comes to people that may have conditions where it's hard to read or whatever, where they, their mental age really isn't that low, but due to other uh, hindrances and their ability to perform the test could cause from there. All right. So then this leads to your intelligent quote. And if you didn't know, that's what IQ stands for intelligence quote, uh, quote, and how you measure it is your IQ equals your mental age divided by your chronological age times 100. Okay. So if I score, uh, I don't know, a 32 and I am 32, times that, so times that by 100, my actual age would be 100, because 32 divided by 32 would be 1, and then times 100 would be 100, and that's right in normal range, okay? Uh, so if I score higher, so if let's say my mental age is, I don't know, 35, you know, divided by my chronological age, I'm going to be in the 100 somewhere, but that's, you see where I'm getting at, this is how you do that. So if you have average intelligence, which I will tell you is the majority of the population, most of us fall in this range, you have an IQ of somewhere between 90 to 109, all right? So if you know you're slightly above average, you may be on the, the 100 side. If you know you're a little bit slower than your peers, you may be in the 90s, but that doesn't mean you're not average, okay? That is average range. And if you look at the different types of IQs. And I think this is important to understand. 50% of the population is an average, average age, okay? Um, now, for people who are above average, so think of your really smart kids, uh, so on, you have 16% are in the above average or high average. You have superior and then 30 or above, which are considered geniuses, um, that's only two and a half percent of the population. So then we get down to the low average. So think of, you know, kids who might need some special education, but not a ton. Um, think uh, these guys can still function in society. OK, the 80 to 89 range can function in society and with minimal help for the most part. Uh, can do the same work as their peers. 70 and below have to have some kind of help in order to function. Um, actually, 69 per, uh, IQ of 69 is the kind of that borderline that's needed for can being considered intellectually disabled. All right. So if you're between 70 or 79, you probably do need some su substantial help in school, but you can still function. You can still, you know, 
do everything, activities, hold a job, all that stuff, you are not intellectually disabled, all right? It's that 69 and below that, that you start getting into the intellectual disability, okay? The only 2% of the population fall into that category. So even if you're a little bit below average, guys, you probably only need a few things to help yourself out, and you're fine. You just have to know what your abilities are and then when you need to seek help. And even borderline, you know, you may need some more support, but at the same token, uh, you can still function very well in society. And guys, I also don't get caught up in your IQs. If you've had your IQ tested, regardless of where you are, that is only one factor in your life. Your ability to work hard pays off far more. I will tell you, I would take somebody as an employee in the 70s to 80 range who's a hard worker over a uh, high average or superior who doesn't work for nothing. Um, Cause just because you're smart, does not mean you're gonna succeed. And I think it's hard for people to understand that because in school we play up the idea of, oh, well, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart, uh, and everything comes easy to you until all of a sudden you're challenged. And because we never teach you how to overcome challenges, just keep telling you how smart you are, a lot of smart kids give up. Um, I've seen a lot of very intelligent kids go to college and drop out because they could not handle challenge. They didn't know how to overcome setbacks. They didn't know how to work hard. And so these things are very critical to success. So again, IQ is just one thing. That's just one thing. Yes, obviously a higher IQ you have, the easier certain things are. But if you don't have work ethic, I don't care how smart you are. You're you're not gonna succeed unless you can come up with something that gives you some kind of passion where you wanna work hard. All right. Unless you're just independently wealthy and your parents are going to pay for everything forever, then you're in a whole different category than the rest of us. So I guess don't sweat it. All right. So let's talk about the Weschler's intelligence test. OK, uh, the thing is, Benet's test had one huge drawback. It was verbally oriented. So. Let's say you were 15, you were above uh, average intelligent, but because you had little access to education, you couldn't read or understand the test. All right. It wasn't, um, it wasn't obvious of what you were supposed to do. And so you get a wrong score. Cause that's the other thing with IQ tests, guys, just because your score may be low, don't freak out because you may just not be good at taking a test. All right. It is just a test. All right. Then you have Weschler, he decided to do two parts. One was a verbal and the second was nonverbal or performance based. So how did you actually figure out uh, that thing? Because some people are mechanically inclined or have this like knack for spatial ability and those performance based tests, they absolutely soar through. All right. So again, he also decided that it made more sense to split groups so have different tests for different age groups all right versus just one test so the first was for adults and that's 16 and older because um guys typically by 16 you have the intellectual capability to perform at an adult level even though maturity wise you may not be able to but for the most part you have the ability to perform at an adult level um the second is for children and that was six to 16. So kind of the same test uh, ages, but before six IQ tests are not very accurate. So in his mind, um, it's just probably easier not to really test until there's this time. So anyways, this one gave you three IQs, your verbal of performance, and then kind of the average of the two. And for the most part, your performance and your uh, verbal are about the same. Okay. Uh, but there are some people and we'll talk about like tomorrow, like savants and so on, where the verbal skill, uh, or the performance skill is just out of the water, but the verbal may not be there. Uh, there's cases that these, uh, people have very low IQs, but then can play as good as Mozart on the piano or, uh, remember every city skyline they've ever been to ever, um, you know, uh, perform 
incredibly complex math equations, but can't even talk. So again, there's, there's people out there that this is not true for. However, most of us, if we were to take this test, would have a pretty even score. You maybe do better slightly in one versus the other, but it would be pretty close to each other. All right, let me see if I can move to the next slide. Oh, shoot, is that it? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I will tell you Wednesdays will be longer, uh, but that looks like it's it for today. So guys, I hope that helped you understand a little bit about uh, intelligence and maybe uh, explain some of the questions that were on your weekly wrap up. So my bad for that one again. Uh, anyways, have a great day. Don't forget to do your attendance and I will talk to you all later.